Hello, welcome back to Energy Lab. Today I'm being joined by Hugo Dominguez, uh, the business director of Energy GCC. Hello. Hi, Stefan. How um, are you? Good. How are you? Fine, thank you. Thank um, you for inviting me. Thank you for coming. Um, Hugo, can you briefly introduce yourself and uh, Energy GCC? Yes, of course. So, uh, my name is Hugo Dominguez. I'm Portuguese and I used to work at uh, Energy headquarters back in Portugal as international sales manager. Uh, prior to come to UAE to develop the Middle East area. Um, Energy uh, is a Portuguese company that was established in 1981 and uh, to promote uh, uh, renewable energy products. And uh, in 1989, they, they developed a new technology, which we call thermodynamic solar systems. Since then, we start to, to enhance the product. We start to export worldwide and we are now in more than 50 countries all over the world. Four years ago, we set up business here in, in Dubai, uh, in UAE, to, uh, to serve as a hub for the GCC countries. Can you tell me more about your thermodynamic solar system? Sure, of course. Uh, the thermodynamic solar system is our main product. It produces uh, hot water using the sun radiance and the heat of the elements. Okay. Uh, it can produce domestic hot water used uh, during sunlight, but also when it's dust, when it's cloudy, or even during night. And this is possible because of the patent technology that uses the thermodynamic cycle in a completely different way. So, so, so th this system, uh, I understand, is sort of working the reverse of a refrigerator, right? Uh, exactly. So this is a reverse uh, refrigeration system. And to tell you a little more how does it work, uh, our solar panels inside them, we don't have water, we use refrigerant fluid. Okay? And, uh, and the cycle goes, so the, the liquid goes in negative temperatures, let's say minus 50 degrees, into the panels, and it will evaporate on the panel using the sun radiance and the temperature of the elements. It's coming out as, as vapor from the panel and being pulled by a compressor that then compresses it up to 28 bars, rising the temperature on the gas up to 70 degrees. Then this gas goes to a primary heat exchanger inside the output tank uh, when we do the uh, heat transfer. Uh, then the remaining energy goes to a secondary heat exchange because we want to be efficient and use in the best way possible the energy available. And we do uh, the, the heat transfer to the preheating tank. After this passes through, uh, the gas passes through the, um, an expansion valve that reduces pressure and temperature and comes back in a closed loop into the panels. You never have to refill it because uh, you are not spending the gas, you are just changing from, from liquid to vapor and the other way around and from low pressure to high pressure and the other way around. And the cycle will go on until uh, you meet the set point, uh, exactly like an AC, then it stops, let's say in a hotel it's 60 degrees, and it will start again whenever there is demand and it reaches the delta T that you can also choose. Great. What I like especially about this product is that it's working without sunlight, that it's working during the night time and potentially it doesn't even need to be outside. I've seen one of your solution is uh, even indoors. Um, I understand it's uh, in a laundry room, I believe, where you have a lot of uh, hot temperature from the laundry and uh, the system is working perfectly there as well. Well, we always try to get the best out of, of, the, of the different projects, right? So when we analyze it, we see the, the perfect location so we can get the, the, the more efficient out of the, of the system. Uh, in, in the case that you are mentioning is a Jumeirah Hotel, uh, we install it next to the, to the laundry room, uh, so the, the exhaust that comes from the laundry, instead of going outside uh, uh, harming the, the environment, it's actually coming to our room and we are absorbing that heat, putting it into tanks. And as a side effect, we are actually cooling down a part of the parking because our panels generate cooling as well, so, uh, because they are filled of uh, refrigerant fluid. So there are other uh, solar he water heating technologies as well uh, around. How does your technology compare to those? So we, we approach the, the heating of the water in a completely different way. As I told you, inside our panels, there is no water, there is refrigerant fluid. Uh, and we do it because we can absorb much more using a liquid that boils at minus 43 degrees rather than uh, uh, water that boils at plus 100 degrees. Mm. That shows you how the entropy curve of this, of this gas. So, um, so also, since we do it in a different way, we don't have the same challenges that the, the solar panels have, especially in this part of the world. 
So first of all, uh, we don't have a limited operation. So, so like you said, we don't need to, to work only in 10 to 13 hours a day. We can work in a limit 24 hours a day. All right. Uh, second, we don't overheat. That's one of the biggest problem in, uh, in UAE and the GCC countries. So um, our panels can withstand up to 120 degrees. Okay. Then corrosion, for example, uh, you have high humidity levels here uh, in, during the summer and when you are close to uh, areas uh, like, uh, like the ocean or the creek, okay, you, you are having many issues. Our panels are made of anodized aluminium with a certified marine coating, so they, don't, uh, they are not vulnerable to, to, to corrosion. Uh, also, uh, we, we don't need to do any maintenance on the panels, we do maintenance on the tanks. The cleaning is not required in our panels. So if they are completely dirty, they are operating always 100%, which doesn't happen in the other uh, solutions. Finally, uh, it's very important to, to, to mention the space. So it's virtually impossible for other solar technologies to retrofit full buildings because there is no space available. Here they are full of chillers or other, other machines, especially the rooftops. Uh, and we are actually doing, uh, we did already six hotels fully with, with solar. And it's possible because we can fit uh, up to 16 panels where you normally put one panel mm -hmm. and each of our panels can produce at least 66% more hot water. So that's, that's the reason we can, we can retrofit the, the buildings. Very good. Is there a specific geography uh, where your solution works really well and where it works e very economically? Well, uh, our solution is it can be used in most of the countries in the world, but of course in the hot countries it makes more sense because it can be a standalone system, it doesn't require a backup. Uh, for example, UAE or Saudi Arabia, you have heat and radiance everywhere that you can use. Uh, regarding the, the saving itself, it depends also not only on the temperature, but also on the tariffs and also on the efficiency of the systems that you have there in place. So to give you uh, an idea in, in UAE, we can we can get um, 90 to 92 percent savings comparing with electrical calorifiers mm -hmm. uh, we can get 80 to 85 comparing with uh, diesel and gas boilers and we can get 35 to 40 percent savings comparing with uh, solar thermal panels or heat pumps okay fantastic um what who is your target uh, client or industry is it uh, the hospitality industry because you did mention you have a number of clients there or is it well, we actually supply for many projects here in UAE. We did, we did uh, around uh, 70 projects the last two years. And uh, we supply for hotels, hospitals, staff accommodations, residential buildings, villas, and some industrial processes. Of course, uh, when, when, you're, uh, when you are intensive for, for hot water, uh, then it makes even more sense to retrofit it. So of course, hotels and hospitals make all sense, of course. Okay, very good. So I s from, from what you're saying, someone who consumes a lot of water uh, and, uh, and then obviously the, the tariffs, the electricity tariffs in the relevant geography or location are uh, uh, important for the return on investment or um, payback period. Uh, so in, in locations, in Dubai, for example, where the electricity tariff is higher than uh, in Abu Dhabi, the payback would be automatically faster, right? Yes, exactly. So um, when we are we're comparing with, uh, with electrical heaters, which probably is the worst way of heating water, the savings are the same in percentage, like I said, 90, around 90%, but of course the payback will be completely different. Uh, you have in Dubai 44 fields, and you have in, in Abu Dhabi 20 fills for a, a, a hotel uh, OPEX, let's say. Still interesting because we can get paybacks uh, between two and three years. Okay. That, that's in Abu Dhabi or that's in Dubai? So in Dubai, normally when we are comparing with electrical heaters, we are going for almost two years. Okay. Okay, a little less than two years, depending okay. again on the on the, how old is the system, if the, if the electrical heaters are horizontal or vertical, if they did uh, any maintenance on them, of course, but just a rule of thumb. And uh, in Abu Dhabi, it would be three years, three years and a half. Okay, but those are very interesting payback. Yes, they are. Periods, very good. Um, and now we're going to see one of your clients, I understand, right? We're, we're going yes. to see one of your hotel We clients. are going to visit uh, Radisson Blue Data Creek. Um, 
and uh, this was the first five-star hotel uh, built in Dubai, by the Excellent. way. They have been uh, doing a full refurbishment and retrofit. Uh, the, the engineering team and management team is quite dynamic there, so they are changing for the better and I think it's a very interesting case study because there we have done not only on the heating side but also on the cooling side we did something. I will, will show it later. Excellent. Let's go. Yeah. So Hugo, now we are here at the Redison Blue in Dera. Um, tell me about this project. Okay, so it was a challenging project because as I told you, this building was built in 1975, so 45 years ago. Uh, so we, need, uh, we needed to analyze the infrastructure to, to rethink the connections. And uh, they, they used to have here a diesel boiler operating for the production of uh, domestic hot water. So that is uh, quite expensive especially when the diesel prices go up and uh, also very uh, polluting so with a very big carbon footprint uh, so what we did we installed 80 uh, thermodynamic solar panels in a special tailor-made uh, structure uh, as you can see here behind me uh, so we we use only 20 square meters uh, and uh, the system is installed in a way that the panels are in front of cooling towers so the cooling towers can actually uh, absorb the cooling that our panels produce. So that's the beauty of it, uh, because uh, normally the systems have the cooling uh, side and the heating side. Of course, for us, it's more important to heat the water. But if our panels are producing a byproduct, which is uh, collateral cooling, the cooling towers are eager to, to, to get it. So what is happening here is that the, the air is flowing through our panels, cooling down about 10 degrees also reducing the humidity, entering the cooling towers, making the cooling towers much more efficient. And also, uh, on the other side, the, that cooling towers are dissipating faster our cooling, and therefore our system can produce more hot water per day if required. So this symbiosis creates a higher efficiency. Uh, this system, to give you an idea, is producing around 41 uh, cubic meters of hot water per day, plus recirculation, at a uh, daily cost of only 197 dirhams per day. Great, excellent. Now that the system has been operating for almost a year or around about a year, what are the economics that you're seeing? So the, we are extremely happy with the system. Uh, it was a success. Uh, so it's, it was commissioned in the uh, end of July 2019. And uh, by the end of six months, we had already a total savings of 160,000 dirhams that corresponds to 82% comparing with the existing, uh, with the previous uh, diesel boiler, which is fantastic. So this system uh, reduced its payback and it's now in one year and a half, which wow. is very good. That's it's, amazing. Uh, like I said, beyond our expectations. Uh, we would expect a system like this to take like two years and a half, but due to the consumption and to the efficiency created with this symbiosis, we, we, we got uh, under two years, which is fantastic. Amazing. I love the product. Uh, I hope you have a lot of success. Thank Continue you. having a lot of success with this product. Um, thank you so much uh, for taking the time and sharing. Uh, it was my experience. pleasure, Stefan. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you like the video, please pr press the like button and subscribe to Energy Lab. Thanks. Thank you.